Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the next tutorial in our snake series. If you remember from the last uh, one, we set up the state manager and if we press the up arrow, we can log that so we have a key listener and a state manager to determine whether we're in the menu or the game. And as I promised in this tutorial, what we're going to be going over is creating the menu and we will create that out of some sprites and I have a sprite sheet that we will be using and then we will also set up a simple mouse listener and um, uh, habits that we can click play game and it'll take us to the game and everything. So uh, one of the things that I did was inside of our project, I added a new folder called assets and put in this picture called menu sprite. And you will be able to download this. I'll have a link in the description so that you can just follow along and use this as well. And I'm going to go over how to just set everything up real quick. So inside of our menu scene, what we're going to want is we're going to want some buffered images and we'll call this title play play pressed this is just literally representing the text images that we'll be displaying exit exit pressed okay and so this will hold the information that is required to display all these images so we're going to do a try catch because every time you open up a file in java you need to surround it in a try catch in case it fails and then we will create another buffered image here and we will call this the sprite sheet. And I will say um, this is equal to new file and we'll say assets slash and then menu sprite dot PNG. So the way that new file works and then we're actually going to have to say also image IO dot read. So what's happening right here? What we're doing is we're simply saying a new file, which is just opening up the file at our project root directory, every time you do new file, it starts at the root and then it's going to the assets folder menu dot menu sprite dot PNG, which is that picture I just showed you. And then image IO dot read simply reads this file and translates it to a buffered image for us. So these are just some Java methods that we can use. And then we can get the sub images, which is going to be uh, each of the images that we want. So title is going to be, let me look up the pixel coordinates real quick. So X is going to be zero and then Y is going to be 242. So we'll say sprite sheet dot get sub image. And so we're going to say zero. This is going to be 242. Let's see. Wait, yeah, 242. <laughs> Just double checking there. And then the width is going to be uh, 960 and the height is 240. So if you have an image to um, that you're using that you would rather use instead of this just make sure you're getting the exact pixel coordinates of where these images are um, if you made it yourself it's really easy to determine that if you're getting some assets from online it's a little bit harder unless they made it nice and easy to determine where everything is okay and then play play is located at so x is going to be zero and the y is actually going to be 121 and then the width is going to be 261 and the height is going to be 121 once again. Okay, and then play pressed it is right next to it. So we'll say sprite sheet dot get sub image, uh, different X. So let's see, the X coordinate is actually 264. And then same Y, 121, same width, 261, same height, 121. And then exit, which is the easiest one. <laughs> so sprite sheet dot get sub image, it's gonna be zero, zero. Same width and uh, actually different width and height. Height is going to be 93. Width is going to be 233. So we'll say 233, 93. And then that's good for that one. And then exit pressed. It's going to be the sprite sheet that gets sub image. And then this one's actually going to be X coordinate 264. So 264. And then zero and then 233 and 93 okay cool so this is a little tedious uh, there are methods that you can do to sort of get around this if you have everything uniformly spaced out and stuff and we may look at that in a future tutorial let's just make sure this is all working right so to draw an image it's really simple we just go down to our draw method we'll say draw image and we'll say the title and then it's gonna say let's see what the parameters are just X, Y. Yep. So we'll do X, Y. We'll say like uh, <laughs> 40. I don't know. And then 40, 
40, 30, 40, 40. Width, height, and so we'll do like 200 by 100. Uh, maybe 300 by 100. And then we'll say a null image observer, okay? And so we should see snake appear on the screen. And as you can see, we get the snake just right on the screen and that looks good. We'll move it over to the right a little bit more because I don't like that and I'm gonna change this back to, we'll do white for now, we may change that. I might do like a bluish, so we'll say X, uh, we'll try 120, Let's see where that goes. Go a little bit more over, we'll try 240. That looks good. I'm gonna skip past all this. Uh, so what we're basically gonna do is we're just gonna say g.drawImage and then we're gonna draw the play, play pressed, exit, exit pressed. Feel free, I'm just gonna skip past this. We're just gonna be doing this and I'm just gonna be positioning those real quick, okay. Okay, so I positioned those. This is how it looks for me. I just drew the title, the play, and the exit button. And I think that looks good. I think what we should do next is actually draw or create our rectangle class to make things a little bit easier with our drawing methods. And then we'll make some rectangles to bound these images just to make everything a little bit easier. So this rectangle will have a public double X value, public double Y value. Uh, we'll actually just define this all on one line too. Width and then a height. And then we can go in here and we'll say public rect and we will say double x, double y, double width, double height. And then we will set all those in here. And this should make it a lot easier when we were drawing all these, and then I'm gonna convert all of these into rectangles. So we'll go up here, and then we will have a public rectangle, and we will say play rect, exit rect, and title rect. So this will make it just a little bit easier. Um, and so I'm just gonna go into here and say title rect equals new rect, and then give it all of these coordinates. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real quick for all these two. Okay, and so I just translate those all and then don't forget to cast these two ints because draw image does expect an integer. And then last thing I'm gonna do to make it easier uh, for when we go to implement like the hovering effect and everything, we're gonna say public uh, buffered image, uh, play current image, and then exit current image. And then inside of this initializer, we will say play current image equals play, exit current image equals exit. And then down here, instead of just drawing these, we will draw the current image for each one. And then we run this and it should be exactly the same. As you can see, it's all exactly the same. Okay, so we'll create a new class in here. We will call this ML for mouse listener. And then this is going to extend mouse adapter and it's going to implement mouse motion listener. Okay, import those, import that. All right, and then we're gonna have a Boolean value is pressed equals false. We're going to have the double X equals zero, Y equals zero. And then we're gonna override a couple of the methods so we will override, this is all very familiar to the last series too. So I will have a little bubble above that you can click on if you wanna check that out in more depth. So if the mouse is pressed, we'll say the is pressed equals true. If the mouse is released, then is pressed equals false. And then mouse moved, we want to keep track of where it's at. This is a void method, mouse moved, mouse event, e, and then we will say this.x equals e.getx, 
this.y equals e.gety. And then we'll have a couple of methods that we can use. Public double get x. And then this will return this.x public double get y. This will return this.y. And this will just return where the mouse is on the screen. And then we'll have one more is pressed. And this will simply return this dot is pressed. Cool. So this is a good mouse listener. Let's go over to our window and register this mouse listener. So we'll say add mouse listener, and then we will say mouse listener, which we will create up here real quick, right below our key listener. So we'll make a static ML mouse listener equals new ML, and that's good. And then we'll say add mouse motion listener, and we will also do the mouse listener here. Okay, and the reason we're making this static is because we're of course going to have to pass this in to our menu scene. So this will also take a mouse listener. We probably don't even need the key listener in here, but um, it'll be good just to have that just in case. So then we will pass in the window.mouselistener in here to our current scene. And so now we should have a mouse listener uh, attached to this image. Okay, and then in the update method, what we'll do is we will just check if the mouse is hovering either one of those images. So if mouse listener, and we have to add this as <clears throat> a member variable up here. So right below the key listener, we'll have a public ML mouse listener. And then inside of this, we will say this dot mouse listener plus mouse listener. Cool. And then down here, we'll say if mouse listener dot get X is greater than or equal to, and we'll do the play image first, play rect dot x and mouse listener dot get x is less than or equal to, and we'll say play rect dot x plus play rect dot width. And so, and that's why we also change those all to rectangles because it makes it a lot easier when we're doing something like this. So we'll say and mouse listener dot get y is greater than, I'm gonna move this over to the next line greater than or equal to play rect dot y and mouse listener dot get y is less than or equal to play rect dot y plus play rect dot height. So if this is all true, then we know that the mouse is within the bounds of that rectangle. We're just checking to see if the mouse is inside the x coordinates and it's bounded within the y coordinates. Cool. And then we'll say play current image equals play pressed. I guess that should be play hovered because technically this is our hover image, but, and we check and hey, look, it works. It just doesn't go off when we unhover. So we'll say else play current image equals play. And then this should fix that little issue. And look at that, it hovers whenever we go over it. Cool, let's do the same thing for exit. Whoops, literally, going to be exactly the same thing. We'll do replace everything that says play rect with exit rect. And I'm going to do replace all. And then inside here, we'll say exit current image equals exit pressed. And then exit current image equals exit here. Nice and simple. This should hover now too. Hovers, hovers, and look at that. Nice and simple works perfectly. And then we'll just say if the mouse is pressed while we're inside one of these, we want to change the state in here. So is pressed. So if it's pressed inside of here, then we'll just say window dot change state, and then we'll change it to the game state. And then if it's pressed inside of here, we want to close the window. So if mouse listener dot is pressed, then we want to just close the whole thing. And so What's going on over here? That's weird. Okay, so inside of our window, let's add in a, another static method, public static void close. And then if this is triggered, we want to close the entire window. We'll actually get around to that in the next tutorial. So, But we should change states when we hit play and we change to the new state. So this is great. We have a great foundation. Um, last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the background color in this menu scene. You can change it to whatever you want. So I'm just going to say new color, zero, zero, zero. I'm going to pick a color up over here. 
and we're going to do this and I'm going to pick a blue. Nice blue. Just because. Yeah, I think that looks nicer, maybe a little bit brighter. Basically, you can change it to whatever you want. There we go. OK, and so that is this tutorial. We now have our states being able to be changed and we will set up that exit method real quick in the next tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you did, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. See you.